Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to discuss the fifth and sixth books in Roger Zelazny's Chronicles of Amber. These books are The Courts of Chaos, the final book in the Corwin cycle, and Trumps of Doom, the first book in the Merlin cycle. This entire video is going to contain spoilers for both of these books, mostly for The Courts of Chaos, so maybe don't watch any further if you do not want to be spoiled for some of the things that happen in these books. I have reviewed the first four books in this series in two other videos videos, which I will link down below if you are interested. They both contain spoilers, once again, for a warning here. Uh, I am not going to recap the entire series up to this point. I'm just going to jump straight into talking about books five and six. In the Courts of Chaos, Corwin is taking the final steps to save Amber and fix the pattern of Amber. His father, Oberon, the king of Amber, has returned and is going to try to repair the original pattern by walking it with the Jewel of Judgment. But if he fails, he wants Corwin to take the jewel and basically inscribe a new pattern. To do this, Corwin takes the jewel, he walks as far as he can towards the Courts of Chaos from stable amber reality to, well, where reality is kind of breaking down, it appears to him that his father has failed at repairing the original pattern, so he does create a new one. After he does this, there's kind of a perfunctory battle sequence, he meets his son Merlin for the first time, and then the book ends. There are these pretty big questions about what exactly happened, what happens next, and what will happen if two patterns are existing at the same time? But the book just sort of ends at this point. Then we come to Trumps of Doom, which is the first Merlin book. We fast forwarded about eight to ten years, and Merlin has been living on Earth for a while. He's gone to college there, he's had a job in computer programming there, he has friends, he knows Bill Roth, who was a good friend of Corwin's when Corwin lived on Earth. And he's actually getting ready to go home to Amber. He's wrapping up his job on Earth, and he's going to go back to Amber or back to this other shadow world and work on his pet project, which is a, like, Trump shadow sentient computer program. <laughs> which is a pretty cool idea. And he's hanging around just a bit longer because it's his birthday, and every year on his birthday, somebody tries to kill him, and he wants to find out who this person is. He just wants to wrap up this particular mystery. But this year, the assassination attempt goes kind of crazy. Uh, he believes that his friend Luke or some other people who just sort of show up and start trying to kill him are involved in this, but he doesn't recognize who they are. He goes back to Amber and finds out this is a much bigger problem. Somebody is now trying to kill everybody in the royal family of Amber, and they don't recognize any of these people. They don't they think that Luke might be a suspect, but they don't know who he is, they don't recognize him at all, but they now know that somebody seems to have a very personal vendetta against the royal family, against Amber, and they just don't know who has this grudge. Let's talk about my feelings. The Courts of Chaos was a letdown. As an ending for the Corwin cycle, I thought it was incredibly anticlimactic. It just didn't have a lot of stuff going on. You know, Corwin spends a lot of time walking through shadow, or we get this really kind of hurried ending where people die and Merlin shows up and then, hey, we're done with the story. The most interesting, the most fascinating parts of the story are when Corwin is creating the new pattern. There's lots of theoretical questions and difficulties going on here that I want to know more about. Like, you know, how does Corwin's personality and his state of mind affect this new pattern? If Oberon did manage to fix the original pattern, what does it mean for reality and for Amber to have two patterns existing in two different places? In Trumps of Doom, we learn a very interesting thing about the end of Courts of Chaos, which is that Corwin disappeared. I think that Corwin's disappearance and Merlin searching for him is going to be a large part of this new story in Amber. I seem to recall this being the case. I really want to compare Merlin to Corwin throughout the rest of the series. I think that Merlin is a bit more of a mellowed version of Corwin. He's like Corwin Light. <laughs> I don't know. He's a lot younger. He's I think he's probably in his early 30s, if that, whereas Corwin had a lot of history. He had lived multiple lives, and he and his brothers and sisters are hundreds of years old. Merlin just doesn't have that history. He isn't as experienced, and to me, he feels more in the here and now, and he feels more modern. He doesn't feel like the swashbuckling swordsman that Corwin was. 
he's a computer programmer, and I get that sense of his personality a lot stronger than the sort of more archaic Amber family traditions that I got from Corwin. But Merlin is so much like his family members, like Corwin and his aunts and uncles, because he just continues this trend of being rather blasé and emotionless about things going on. It's one of the reasons that I had difficulty with a lot of Corwin's fight scenes. He's fighting for his life, but you don't get that sense of urgency. You don't feel like he's ever scared, like he's ever really concerned about not winning. And you just know he's not gonna die. He's not gonna be seriously injured because he's our hero. And you know, he has magical amber healing properties. So there, I think I just want more emotional urgency from the characters because Merlin has the same thing going on. He's a competent fighter. He doesn't seem to be really worried about dying. I want more emotion, and maybe it's there, and I'm just not recognizing it. Who knows? At this point, I do think that Merlin is a more sympathetic as a character than Corwin was. I think it's just because he does feel more modern to me. He is younger. He has a lot of the qualities that I really liked in Corwin's character, his humor, his sarcasm, but what I want to know is how is he different from Corwin? How is his story going to be different? Because they cannot be the same people. That would just be repeating the first five books all over again. And I see a lot of potential in Merlin's character because Corwin was Amber. Corwin was so tied up in the politics of Amber, but Merlin doesn't have this experience and he is a different person. He lived half of his life in the Courts of Chaos with the Logris and then the other half of his life in Amber with the Pattern. It feels like he could have multiple loyalties or that he could at least have a new perspective on what's going on. A side note. I am terrible at recognizing symbolism and more figurative language like metaphors in books. I have a very literal brain and this is something I just have to live with. It is frustrating sometimes for me to read Zelazny's work because I think he relies heavily sometimes on literary illusions that I don't get, a lot of mythological references that I'm simply not aware of, a lot of subtle foreshadowing, very subtle foreshadowing, and symbolism. I just don't, I don't get a lot of this stuff sometimes. So I really wanted to talk about any connections or foreshadowing from the Courts of Chaos that ties the Corwin cycle to the events in the Merlin cycle. And at this point, I'm not sure that I'm the best person to talk about this because I, I either, there isn't anything or I just missed a lot of it. One thing that was pointed out to me on Twitter, thank you, you know who you are, was that in the course of chaos, there's this very quick blink and you'll miss it scene where Corwin pulls out his deck of, of cards, his trumps, uses them to tell his fortune and then puts them away because he gets an impossible future. You can interpret this in multiple ways. One is that the trump cards simply aren't working or this is an, an actual valid fortune and that it's an impossible future because Corwin is going to disappear in between the Courts of Chaos and Trumps of Doom. I just don't know. <laughs> I honestly thought nothing of this particular scene when I read it for the first time. I completely forgot about it and I had to go back and try to find it. And it reminds me a lot of the blood curse from the first book. Corwin, by the second and third books in the series, thinks that his blood curse that he references from the first book has caused the Black Road. This is before he knows about what Brand has done with Random Son Martin. And when I was reading the second and third books, I was so frustrated because I couldn't remember, what is this blood curse? It turns out that this really important thing that Corwin is all messed up inside about is like, two or three sentences in the middle of a long stream of other things he's talking about in the first book, I had to reread basically the entire first book for a third time to find that scene because I was like, what was his blood curse? Anyway, as you can probably tell, I am clueless most of the time. And finally, as I wrap this up, I want to address once again the issue of the writing style and the pacing. A lot of people who are reading along with me during the first five books commented on how weird the writing style was and how jarring a lot of the pacing was, where books would end or begin in weird places, or boring events would take a long time, but really important information would just be jammed into a single sentence. And this frustrated me as well. I was found this to be very odd because of the other non-amber things I read by Zelazny, I did not 
have the same impression of him as a writer. It turns out that the first five books, The Corwin Cycle, was serialized. There was about a seven-year publication gap, and then The Merlin Cycle continued, but it was not serialized. They were published straight to regular novel format. Because of this, I was trying to see evidence in Trumps of Doom that the writing style or the pacing had changed a lot. It was such a big time gap and a different way of publishing and potentially writing the books. I thought that there might be a difference, and I can't say I really saw a difference. It wasn't worse by any means, but it still had that same or similar feel of the writing style and the world and everything. It could be that that's just how Zelazny writes multi-book stories, or it could be that maybe he tried really hard to match the writing style of the first couple of books, because I don't think that he's a bad writer. <laughs> so, on the whole, I didn't find that the writing style of Trumps of Doom was that different. I didn't have any problem with the pacing. It actually ends on a pretty good cliffhanger, <laughs> which I quite liked. It was... Especially, I noticed this because the events in Trumps of Doom kind of mirror the events in Nine Princes in Amber in the first Corwin book, and the end of the Corwin book is this really weird place, but in Trumps of Doom, it ends on in the place where I thought that the very first book should have ended. I liked that. I did feel that Trumps of Doom was a solid book. It's hard to give evidence for this, but overall, it just worked for me. I did enjoy the story, and I am already pretty invested in Merlin as a character and where this new story arc in the Amber series is going to go. That is it for me in this discussion. If you have read The Courts of Chaos and or Trumps of Doom and you want to talk to me about them, please comment down below. I would love to know what you guys caught that I might have missed about your likes and dislikes. Um, especially if you have any like thoughts on comparing Merlin to Corwin and how their stories might mirror each other, please let me know because that's, that's quite what I'm interested in right now. Thank you all for watching this video and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.